So one of the, the big questions I want to ask most people is um, on, on social media there's been a, a big, we'll say delightful debate on, on the meaning of classic in terms of, of, of Turner classic movies and the films that they're showing here. Some people like thinking the timeline of classic movie ends you know, by the 70s, others have a different meaning. So I'm, I'm curious, having been in the classic movie industry in the 30s and 40s and moving out of the 50s and seeing films that are considered classics now, how would you describe a classic film? Anything that, any film that transcends its own time. A film that transcends its own time. So, so, obviously you're here, All the President's Men, super classic. What what makes this a classic film, All the President's Men? Because we keep, we keep seeing how relevant it is. The details made will, would be different. Uh, but the whole question of, of, of power and the uses and the abuses of power, uh, it, you go back to the Greek tragedies. Uh, you go back to, you know, you know one novel after another. Uh, the, the, that is a subject which uh, has enlisted the energies of, of writers for 2,000 2,500 years. So anything that this uh, Trigos in Brooklyn is set in nine, about 1912 in Brooklyn. And yet people constantly today who have no, no memory of that. Who, who may not even have grandparents who have memories of that that they could have passed on find a relevance find something in it or many things in it that speak to them of their own families of their own struggles their own desires uh, that's why I say I mean, to me a classic is anything that transcends its own time. Wonderful. And then another question that I have, um, how would you, so you traverse Hollywood, you know, as, as a, you traverse Hollywood as a, as a child star. I was what do you think it's more difficult now to have sort of that, to be able to do that considering how you see so many child stars, unfortunately. Well, that's always been that's always been the problem. You say that the, the child stars who unfortunately become alcoholic or, 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 or uh, drugs. Or, uh, and in a few unfor very unfortunate cases, uh, take take their own lives. Uh, it is very difficult. Uh, Hollywood, because Hollywood has always gotten blamed for everything <laughs> ever since it started. You know. uh, but uh, it is it is difficult. Uh, I don't think I ever quite went went through any of that, and that's partly because I was already a working child actor on radio and stage in New York before I made my first movie, and because my parents were very successful musicians in, in radio and the theater, uh, had their own lives, they weren't trying to live a thwarted ambition through me at all. And there was always a, a world outside, the world of, of, of film, and, and the world of, of the theater, and uh, it was uh, a world where one had to know history and philosophy and, and, and you know, a civilized, <laughs> a civilized mentality. Uh, and that's what I was very fortunate to, to grow up in, and it, it gives you a certain sense of. We need to see more of you. Who you are, even though you may struggle for many, many years trying to redefine that. Uh, there was a grounding of some kind that, that kept me away from some of the things that 
unfortunately got other people trapped. Uh, and I, again, I feel fortunate, very fortunate about that. I might have found other ways to screw things up, but uh, the, uh, the very publicized front page ways of doing it. No. Yeah. I've been fortunate in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Can I ask a question? Yes.